good morning, good afternoon. It depends on when you're watching this video, but for me it's morning. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the HD2 dome and the SIM injector and all the features and the, the ports and how to configure it. So this is my HD2 dome. So let's open up the box and see what's included. Okay, so I have my HD2 dome. I have a pole mount kit. I have the biggest nut I've ever seen for bolting stuff together. We got some bag of screws. We have another bag of screws. We have another bag of screws. We have a weird white box that I'll explain. And we have a mounting adapter bracket. On my SIM injector, I have the SIM injector. Uh, it's going to have a little metal plate here to, uh, covering the SIM, adapt SIM ports. And I've got a four port PV switch. I have a 56 volt power adapter and a plug. Okay, so let's talk about the um, HD2 dome and what all these parts are for and how we would set it, set it up. And it, it's really built for a whole bunch of different types of installs. So for example, if I'm gonna mount this to a roof, I might drill a hole in the roof and then just bolt it in and then I have my cat RJ45 right there. So, or if I want to bolt it to a wall or bolt it to the, a roof like that where I can see the connectors, um, we can also surface mount this to the roof or we can install this uh, on a on a wall, so um, or on a pole. So so the adapter bracket here allows for a whole bunch of different options, uh, which is really nice. The white box allows you to have your LAN PoE input and then your LAN pass through with PoE pass through, and it has this really cool wiring set up on the inside that allows them to do that. Um, so basically, if I wanted to use that, I would pull out the ethernet adapter, plug it into the, the router, and then there's a little guide there, and then bolt it on. And when I screw it on with the baggie of screws, um, I now have a different looking piece of equipment. It has my to Ethernet with the seals. I have the ability to now mount this, and it says up on it, mount this via the, the, the holes. So this would slide into the holes, it holds it in place, and now I can either surface mount this or wall or pole mount it. So that's the idea here of these brackets. It gives you a whole bunch of different options for the installs, which is really nice. Um, you have your pole mount kit here. Um, to, to mount that in. So, so slide this apart. Now we might talk about SIM cards too. So if you're looking at the SIM cards, we can either use a SIM injector or we can install SIM cards right into the router. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to take it apart. I have my trusty little drill hill. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Okay, so I've taken off all this, all the, um, taken out or unscrewed all the screws. So just pop this thing up. There we go. And when I open the lid, I have my router. You can see my modules there, and here's my SIM cards. So I have A and B, and then I so said one, two, three, four. Um, so you can put your SIM cards right there if you want to. These are just the standard 2FF SIM cards. Um, then bolt it back together. And when you bolt it back together, now you have your SIM cards installed. That is not very efficient in my opinion. So what Peplink has done is they've come up with the SIM injector and the SIM injector allows us to and use remote SIMs instead of integrated SIMs. And that's what we're gonna use for the remaining of this video. But if you wanted to, and you wanted to do this as, as least, uh, least expensive and as easy deployment as possible, you could buy just the HD2 dome, you could install the SIM cards in it, mount the, drill a hole in, in a roof, or just mount it to a metal bracket, 
run an ethernet cable here to, to a PoE, like a PoE injector, plug it into your router and program the, the HD2 dome. So it's not hard to do. Okay, so I have it screwed back together. So for the purpose of this uh, demo, all I need is the HD2 dome. And then I'm gonna need my SIM injector with some SIM cards. So here is my SIM injector. The SIM injector has um, 56 volt uh, power input or a 12 to 56 volt DC input. If you take off the, the tray here, you have your 2FF standard SIM cards. I got my, my SIM cards and I plug them in here. I now have um, this device with one and two programmed. So I've got the router or the SIM injector. So now I need to power the SIM injector. So I've got my, my SIM injector powered. I've got my ethernet plugged in to the HD2 dome. And so you can see it connected and powered on. I'm gonna plug my laptop in to the SIM injector. So this gives me a four port switch. I can also put an AP in here. So if I grabbed like an AP1 AC mini, I could plug that in right here and have that on my LAN of the HD2 dome so that it projects Wi-Fi. Uh, so let's see here. Okay, so here's my admin page for the router. So here's my HD2 dome. So now what I'm gonna do is um, update the firmware so that, and then log into the SIM injector. I should be able to go to status, client list, and there's my SIM injector right there. So boom, boom, and there's my SIM injector. So, uh, and then if I go to SIMS, there they are. Now my SIM one didn't read, let me take that out. Okay. Um, so, and then what I'm going to do now is update all the firmware uh, on these routers and just to bring them up to the latest. So stand by one second. Okay, so I've updated this to the 8.1 firmware. So now if I go back to my PEXM, my SIM injector, what I need is the serial number. So I'm going to copy the serial number and I'm going to go back to my HD2 dome, click details, click use remote SIM put in the serial number colon and the port that I want to use. If I don't put a port, then what's going to happen is it's going to randomly pick one. So I won't be able to control which SIM goes to, to the device. So you can do this and it will just pick one of the available SIM cards. Um, but I want to tell it which SIM card to use. And if you wanted to use multiple SIM cards, you could do this. Oops. Like that. Um, but because I only have two SIM cards and I have uh, two ports, I'm gonna say cell one's gonna use port one, save and apply. And then cellular two is gonna use port two, save and apply. And then I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna go to advanced remote SIM management, click edit and auto land discovery. And I can even put my host there if I want to. That'll just help it find the SIM injector easier. So I hit dashboard. So if I go to my SIM injector, I can see the serial number of my router, port zero, and the serial number of my router, port one, uh, accessing my SIM cards that I've defined. So now I'm just waiting for them to activate on the router itself. Okay. And so now the HD2 dome is online. It's connected. I can see both my internet connections there. So what I'm going to do now is add this to in control and enable speed fusion cloud. So I'm going to copy my serial number from the router, go back to my in control, add devices. And what's neat is I can also add my SIM injector if I want to. So if I go to my status, oops, um, copy the serial number there, go back to in control, paste that. I'm going to do uh, HD2 dome demo as my tags. Next. 
confirm dashboard. And so my H T two dome should show up. Okay, so my router is registered online now, so you can see my HD2 dome there. I'm just gonna to go to settings and firmware policy. And I just wanna make sure it's running the latest. So um, I'm gonna to go to my HD2 dome. I can see the, the GA build now available. Um, so 8.1 is now, uh, now GA, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit immediately, hit save. You can see in control now pushing that 8.1 firmware down to the down to the router. You can see it's uh, rebooting right now, so that's a good sign. So it should be back up and running just momentarily. You can also see that the uh, sim injector has come online. Um, it does have the latest firmware. You can see the router has rebooted. It's loading the latest. It's loaded the latest firmware, and now it's connecting automatically to my remote sims via the sim injectors. So it should be reporting online here in just a few seconds. Okay, so now that the HD2 dome is online, my SIM injector is also online and sending SIM cards. Now we wanna configure SpeedFusion Cloud. Um, so you just click SpeedFusion Cloud. It asks you if you wanna get your activation key. So I'm gonna say, get my activation key now. It's then gonna have you put in your email address and the serial number of the router. Hit, I'm not a robot, submit, and it's gonna send you an email with an activation license. Um, you do not need to do anything. Uh, if you wait, if I go to in control and I click on my HD2 dome here, in just a few seconds, my feature license is gonna be added to my in control. So we'll just wait for that to be pushed. Okay, so all I did was wait probably four minutes and just refreshed my, my interface here, SpeedFuse Cloud. It went, the, the activation link went away and now it's asking me to choose my location or and connect to cloud clients. So the, once you fill out that form on, online, the license key is automatically pushed to your router. If for whatever reason it's not, they also email you an activation key and you can go to system and feature add-ons and paste that activation key right here and you'll get your activation uh, as well. So, but but you shouldn't need to if it's connected to in control. And so there's my Speed Fusion Cloud. So now I'm gonna choose my location. I can choose uh, my two United States locations or my, Europe, my, my global locations, or I can just choose automatic. I, I usually just go with automatic because it makes it nice and easy. Um, you can also click on this Speed Fusion Cloud that's created here and you can create sub tunnels. So this default tunnel is a bonding tunnel, but say I wanna use WAN smoothing or forward error correction for live streaming. I can create a new tunnel. I can call it WAN smoothing and I can enable WAN smoothing on this connection. I can also create another tunnel called forward error correction and enable forward error correction. So now I have three tunnels, one default that's gonna be bonding, one that's gonna be WAN smoothing, another one that's gonna be forward error correction. I can then hit save to this and apply changes. And if I go back to my dashboard, you'll see that those tunnels are created, Speed Fusion Cloud, default WAN smoothing and forward error correction. And it's gonna to start to create those tunnels and set up the traffic. Okay, now that my tunnels are created, I still have to tell the router to use that traffic. So one of the things that I can do is go to my network, sorry, my advanced, and I can go to send all traffic to, and I could just hit send all traffic to, Speed Fusion Cloud, put a, uh, a domain name, or I mean a DNS server like 8.8.8, .8 and then hit save, and all traffic is gonna go through the Speed Fusion Cloud regular tunnel but that doesn't allow me to use all my other tunnels or fail over to cellular. So um, it's easy, but I don't necessarily recommend it. One of the things that I like to do is go to my outbound policies and configure policies to use the cloud. So for example, I can set up a rule that says um, speed fusion cloud WAN smoothing. So then I can set my destination like domain name and I can say, uh, 
I don't know, VoIP.com or whatever your provider, your voice provider is, and I can say priority, drag my cellular connections, and then I can pull, oh, sorry, I gotta have to have one. So I'm gonna pull my Speed Fusion Cloud WAN smoothing over, drag my cellular connection, and I'm gonna say, fell through the next rule. So what this is doing is saying, if the destination is, my do is, is this specific domain, or if it is an IP address or whatever I want it to be, um, use the WAN smoothing. If, that, if for whatever reason that connection is not available, fail through, fail through to the next rule. What this does is it says, WAN smoothing fails through the next rule. Now I'm gonna add another rule that says um, forward error correction. So I'm gonna say FEC. And let's say the destination is any, and I'm using TCP port 9100, and I'm doing like a, a video stream. And I can say priority FEC, pull my cellular connections off, and once again, fail through the next rule just in case something goes wrong. But in the event that the, the Speed Fusion Cloud is enabled, I want you to go ahead and terminate any regular connections and get them on the FEC connection. Hit save. So now you can see I've got my FEC rule, my forward error correction rule that's sending any of my video traffic using forward error correction over the forward error correcting uh, Speed Fusion Cloud. Anything going from my VoIP server is using the Speed Fusion Cloud WAN smoothing. And then right now, everything else is just using the regular internet. So I wanna add another rule that says just bonding. And I wanna say any, any, any priority Speed Fusion Cloud default, remove these connections. And the reason why I'm moving the cellular one and cellular two is because I'm having it fail through to the next rule. So I'm basically saying, assuming that the cloud is working, use follow these policies. If not, go ahead and move to the next rule. So what you'll see is the rule says bonding, uh, Speed Fusion Cloud default, FEC, if it's the, the VoIP application or the video application, WAN smoothing if it's the VoIP destination, um, and then bonding any, any, any out my default regular bonding. But if the bonding or the cloud is not working, now I just want you to just load balance the internet and use it like normal. If I apply that change, I can now have that rule applied to this network. So now, say I wanna do some, I wanna manage this in in control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to settings, configuration, I'm gonna download a copy of my active configuration. I'm then gonna to go to in control, and I'm gonna to go to outbound policies. So I want instead of creating these HD2 policies in, um, my router, I'm gonna create them in in control. So I'm gonna import this configuration file. I'm gonna name this my HD2 dome, oops, sorry, can't type today apparently, dome demo. I'm gonna say any of the following tags, my HD2 dome demo. And you'll see now, look, my, my Fusion, my, my FEC is enabled, my WAN smoothing is enabled, my bonding. Now I can be a little bit more specific though. So watch this, I'm gonna click on my Speed Fusion WAN. And instead of saying domain name, I'm actually gonna say SAS, and I'm gonna say Zoom and Office 365. So now what I'm doing is I'm saying, if Zoom or Office 365, like Teams, I want you to go ahead and use my WAN smoothing tunnel, my pet VPN tunnel uh, traffic. Fell through the next rule, hit safe. Um, so now, now that I'm using in control, I can use um, SAS applications. So my forward error correction, for example, I could say if the destination, and so I can also do the same thing. I can do, do um, like a SAS and choose a SAS if I, if I wanna use forward error correction control there but most likely it's gonna be a group network and it's gonna be IPs of, so we can set up some grouped networks now that have our, our servers. So you can say if the destination is my servers and the port is 9100, use forward error correction. Um, and so that's a nice way to do that. To, to manage these group networks, let me hit okay and hit save. 
and you'll see my HT2 dome profile there, right there, being applied to all my HT2 domes. I can then go to network and grouped networks and have a list of servers right here. And these servers can be a um, list of servers that are used by my HT2 dome policy for sending forward error correction based destination traffic. So if you're trying to send to a streaming server or things like that, and you have a whole bunch of servers that you want to be able to stream to, you can use the grouped networks to do that. So if I go back to my router and go to my advanced settings and my outbound policy, so I can go to my outbound policy now and I can see my new policy applied that gives me the SAS network def definition here for my WAN smoothing. And you can see that's grayed out, like I can't click it because it's using in control to push those SAS networks for Office 365 and Zoom traffic. So basically what we did here is we talked about the HT2 dome, the SIM injector, and we talked about how to configure SpeedFusion Cloud and utilize in control with our SAS networks and outbound policies to utilize SpeedFusion Cloud. To recap here, we have our HD2 dome. I've plugged it in via CAT6 cable that goes into my SIM injector. If I unhook this, I can hook up this adapter plate, plug it in via the cable that's right there to the router, and now I have a PoE in and a PoE pass through. Once I have this adapter plate installed, it allows me to connect it to my either my pole mount adapter or my surface mount. And it has these little holes in it right there. So it's gonna be, see how it says up and then this. So then I can do this and slide, slide in. Oops, sorry, this goes. The the uh, the R, the RJ45 should be down. The little arrow should be up. See up, and then you just slide this in, and it's going to lock it into place. This bag that has the orange that comes with the orange. This is the bag that's going to give you that's going to mount that has the the screws to mount this to the HD2 dome. It also gives you two screws, two bolts there to mount into the side, and then the orange. Uh, seal group goes into the bottom here to, to act as a watertight for that. So you can screw that in right there. So that, this one bag gives you all the tools needed to mount this square base plate um, to the HD2 dome and to this, this kit. This kit, you can mount it to a wall with anchors. You can mount it to a pole with the pole kit or it comes with these massive heavy, heavy duty straps that you can run through the slots here like this and mount it to a big pole. So it allows for that as well. So you have a whole bunch of different mounting options that you can use on this to be able to install it. Just make sure that you're mounting it the right way, that the arrow is up, that these are down, and then the HD2 dome sets on it like this and whether you mount it to a to a, a roof or a surface vertically or you mount it to a pole like this or a wall like this um that's up to you if you choose to just mount it to like a vehicle for example where you mount you drill a hole and you mount this um you have this bolt this nut that can screw in to the bottom um holding that to that surface so you don't if you don't want to use any of these adapters and just want to go straight in you can also do that if you do not want to use the SIM injector, you can unscrew the outer ring of screws, pop this off, and there's access to all four SIMs um, for the router. Anyways, I hope this gives you a good overview of the HD2 dome, the SIM injector, and how to configure SpeedFusion Cloud. I hope that this is informative. If there's anything we can do for you, please reach out West Networks um, sales at westnetworks.com, or you can call my support line uh, or reach out to support at support at westnetworks.com. Thank you so much and have a great day.